was a reef a liar and this and another. They they really mad at us. Zarif and, and the Ruhani, they mad at them boys. But the rock bars said, take it easy. <laughs> the rock bars don't do it. Take it easy. You know what I mean? Uh, everything's going to be all right. So now let me get into really what we've been. Uh, here we have actors. We have a designed future. We have evolved with the curve or ahead of the curve. So in order to evolve with the curve and ahead of the curve, we have to have a prior analysis of what's going on. But we have to take our time to let it develop, and that's what we're going to talk about. A lot of actors uh, in this purpose was to cut off China and to cut off Iran. USA, Zionist, Saudi connection, we called it years ago, the Triangle of Terror. We're going to deal with some of the things like World Trade Center 1, World Trade Center 2, some of Bin Laden, Ramsey Youssef, all of those people. We're going to deal with uh, design future. When you have a future you want to move toward, how to develop the system to go along with that and to aid you and assist you in your direction. And so, this is just a little thing called the Bill of Rights. It has a little bit of commentary here and there. Local officials rise to defy Patriot Act. Arcata was one of the first cities uh, to pass resolutions against global warming, unilateral war in Iraq. Last month, it joined the rising chorus of municipalities in developing a resolution urging local law enforcement officials and others contacted by officials to refuse requests under the Patriot Act that they believe violate the individual's rights under the Constitution. Then the city went a step further. A uh, little city that's only 16,000 people has become the first in the nation to pass an ordinance outlawing voluntary compliance with the Patriot Act. Patriot Act. Oh, let's go back 20 years. Patriot Act was when we was talking all this stuff about bombing patterns, you know, what they fit into, and that was that was during that era. During that era, protests, free my father, effective death penalty, uh, and counterterrorism. Bill 1996 allows the U.S. to harass and detain Muslims without due process. That's what it allows. That's why these cities are moving after us, but they still moving against the Patriot Act. This is what they did. When we saw this, we moved on right away. Imprison and detain Muslims based on secret evidence. You don't hear much about that anymore, but they could have secret evidence. We got this. It's none of your business what we got. Forget testifying in court and saying, where's your evidence? We, no, we got secret evidence. Tap phone lines, because they don't even do it violating privacy, right? They don't even have to tap phone. Detain Muslims on the basis of guilt by association. Of course, the Constitution allows freedom of speech, press, and religion. And yeah, association. Eliminate rights of Muslims to give uh, any form of aid to so-called terrorist countries, even if it is in the form of food. This is what they're doing now, even with Iran. You can't help Iran. 
under no circumstances. And you can't help people, it says, about freedom of speech, press, and religion. Well, if you say you can't give zakat and sadaqah and infaq to certain people, that means you're passing a law against religion. That's why we have another one somewhere called Secretary of State in Religion. Down with constitutional dictatorship. Now these are back in 99, so you know, we're not going to be behind on anything. You know, stand up for truth justice. Stand against state terrorism aimed at Muslims. Colonization of the Muslims da, 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 down with constitutional dictatorship. It was down at uh, AMC, where Alamudi used to be, and uh, Marty Bray was sitting in the swivel chair moving around. Man, what do you think you could help us with such a yeah, show we got? grab back. And uh, all the white folks was there too, the constitutional white folks. And I call the Constitution a constitutional dictatorship. And them white folks was, <clears throat> I know the lady Kit Gage was her name. They're supposed to be uh, really progressive. Well, they are that they Lawyers, they would know that we live under a constitutional dictatorship. She was upset with me calling America a constitutional dictatorship. You know what I mean? So we could tell there's ways that we find out where, you know what I mean, where people's head is at. Yeah, anyway. And why they still go to certain people for support. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to go kind of quickly. Library Commission, Patriot Act President, you know, people, they develop the thing under this new Patriot Act and all that. You could go, to, if somebody's taking out books, if somebody's looking at stuff on the internet, they could go under the Patriot Act 1 and 2 and get you to turn the people in because they're looking, they're reading the wrong literature. They're looking at certain stuff, right? That's totally an invasion of privacy. Okay. So there's a whole page. Uh, the cities are saying no snooping, uh, no federal snooping, and what have you. ACLU seeks information on government's use of vast new surveillance power. This is our stuff dating quite a while back, but it touches on something now. Uh, yeah, check out reading habits. They could, if the government can go to libraries and take your stuff, but check your stuff, they can check your reading habits and all that. Now they don't have to do none of that stuff. All your, whatever you look at on your phone, they got that, whatever you read, they got that, you know what I mean? And then them guys give it to the government. They don't have no grit, uh, no nothing, they just give it to them. Uh, okay, Patriot Revolution. Uh, cities across the country have been quietly staging revolts against uh, uh, the Patriot Act, saying it gives law enforcement too much power and threatens civil rights. Attack on civil liberties. George Bush signed the U.S. Patriot Act on October 28th. Boy, the Senate, Senate overwhelmingly approved. Uh, things like military tribunals and uh, diminishment of laws that protect Americans' privacy. Is meant to that is meant to protect us. Okay, man, terrorizing federal agents without subpoenas are asking firm for records.
free expression after September 11, whole new ball game. Amending the Fourth Amendment, this is what they talk about. Illegal searches and seizures. Okay. They started decades ago in the black community. They lowered the bar, they lowered the pressure threshold for illegal sex and seizures. How? Simple city ordinance classifying this as a high crime neighborhood. In a high crime neighborhood, the, we have to check for weapons, we have to pass, we have to look, right? So with us, they just threw our civil rights out. Now white people, this is a, if it's 20 years ago, they get worried about all their civil liberties. Cities are standing up and saying, we're not going to go with this. Now, just for the heck of it, look around at uh, not only Portland, Oregon, look at all the cities. The cities, the mayors and the governors are saying what to the federal government? We want y'all out of here, man. We, we already, whatever we're doing. But then government will say, we are there to protect Federal buildings, federal property. They said this is in the state. We don't want you here. But the people were saying that already a long time ago. But they eased on past it. They bulldozed and they drove right over. Right? So the people, uh, the people on the local level, that's the mayors, even the governors. You look at Don. The governors, hey, Don trying to federalize a, a dictatorship on everything. Even on this coronavirus and all of that stuff, he trying to federalize everything. Downtown, when they move on the people down there, he's trying to federalize everything. He's trying to push for a dictatorship. They needed him to do that because nobody else would have the nerve to do it. Obama, you couldn't get him to say nothing like that. He's a constitutional law. He knows better. What are you talking about? Right? They hired him to do this job. They saw, you think I'm lying, look at Netanyahu, look at Iran, look at the first thing Donald Trump did. Come in and move the embassy. Stop funding Palestinians, right? Starving them to death and then say we got the deal of the century, right? Of course, they look quiet about that right now because everybody say, hey, man, that ain't right what you're doing. So they ain't talking about it a lot. But they were rolling with it. They cut off to hold throat everything the Palestinians would stand for, right? The embassy, the this, the that, all the negotiating stuff, they just snatched that from them. The Iranians snatched everything from them, right? And brutalized, brutalized. And the Chinese, oh, the only thing is, is that when you are headed down, you're going to go down probably anyway, because that's, hey, that's your destiny. Pretty fast. Huh? Pretty fast. Pretty fast. Okay. China and Iran, bosom buddies. Everybody's talking about a different currency than the U.S. dollar. Not everybody's just discussing that. They said, well, maybe we'll move to the euro. Well, if they move to the euro, They've been giving Iran a little bit of out. They've been China. China is on the road. That Belt and Road thing. Throw a train here. You go up to to Boston. It take you I don't know how many hours. China got a train. It'll take you zoop and you there. I mean, just like that. As soon as you sit down, zoop. Okay, time to red bells is ringing. Let the seat belt off. Get off now. Right? That's the chat. Hey man, it, China is building that type of stuff all over the world. The train from Mubasa 
to Nairobi, used to take, by the way, Mombasa's is a nice city, well, it used to be 50 years ago, you know, on the Indian Ocean. A lot of Muslims in Mombasa, Mombasa, Kenya. Train took 12 hours. Now they got a train to get you there in four hours. Hey man, okay. Not only that, but the alliances. America in its decline has aided and assisted in its own decline by pushing everybody away from it. It's stuff that don't make sense. Okay, you got NATO. Well, it's just working. So what, they moving 12,000 soldiers today? For what? Some people say, oh, it's a gift to Russia, it's a gift. It's insanity for them. Their whole spy thing is hooked to Germany. All the Middle East, you know what I mean? You ever notice if they pull people from the Middle East, they take them to Germany, debrief them, then they give them a rest, and send them either back there or over here, right? Germany is where it's at. Germany is right next to all that stuff over there. So Don fits the narrative to destroy America. I'm going to get to World Trade, but I just got to read something on Patrick Henry said. This is my favorite speech. No, it's my favorite. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. The next gale that sweeps in from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen may wish? What would they have? Life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Now I learned this in eighth grade, from eighth grade civics. That's why I learned that. Uh, it just sounded nice. <laughs> no, that, that, that's Patrick Henry, the governor of Dixie, right across the, the governor down there, uh, right next door, whatever, Virginia. What's funny about that, I didn't learn that. I learned the Emancipation Proclamation. Oh, my that's goodness. <laughs> Goodness gracious, your life. My goodness. <laughs> right. Provocateur state. Basically, this is how to get what you want, world, to all that stuff. So let's read a little bit. Uh, what is now openly billed as permanent war ultimately serves the geopolitical ends of social control in the interest of U.S. corporate domination, much as the anti-communist crusade of the now exhausted Cold War did. So now we're dealing with permanent war for geopolitical ends, social control for the interest of U.S. Corporate domination. Okay. Uh, back in 2002, following the trauma of 9-11, Secretary of Defense Donald H. Rumsfeld predicted there would be more terrorist acts against the American people and civilization at large. How could they call it a Pearl Harbor event? I don't know if y'all know. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. What do you mean Pearl Harbor? That was the, 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 the black lady or whatever the name was. How could he be so sure of that? Perhaps because these attacks would be instigated 
on the order of the Honorable Mr. Rumsfeld. According to the Los Angeles Times, military analyst William Arkin, writing October 27, 2002, Rumsfeld set out to create a secret army, a super intelligence support activity network that would bring together CIA and military covert action, information, warfare, intelligence, and cover and deception to stir the pot of spiral global violence. This is provocative to a state. Uh, so, let's see. Try to pass that down the road. According to a classified document prepared by Rumsfeld, for Rumsfeld by his Defense Science Board, the new organization, the Proactive Preemptive Operations Group, that's this one. We won't have to, we got both of these programs. We, we technically have those. This is speaking about it. Proactive uh, Preemptive Operations Group would actually carry out secret missions designed to provoke terrorist groups into committing violence acts. Well, they said they going to provoke. No, they did those things. And then they say, and they all, they provide the act and they, they provide the disease and the cure. You see Don, what he's doing? Trying to provide the disease, and here we come with the cure. For disobedience, for riotous behavior, for black on black crime. See, if they had any love for black people, CIA funnels drugs into poor U.S. neighborhoods. This stuff we've been knowing. If they wanted to do something for black people, if they wanted to rebuild or reconstruct the wonderful neighborhoods we used to have, first they would, re they would pull out the drugs or legalize drugs. And if they legalize drugs, if 80% of the crime in America is based on drugs and what have you, then they could uh, fire all those police that go around chasing people for, for drugs. They could let 80% of the people out of the penitentiary. The courts would go back to normal. 